Hey, welcome to the podcast, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me, Asher. So good to be here. Appreciate you. Good to have you. It's funny. I, I was just telling you, I think you're part of the reason why I joined Breathe University. And of course, I was like, let me let me throw on the, the shirt, share with the people with the, uh, the inauguration. I think it was like 2013 when it started. Yep. And then you guys were like the originals, you, Patrick Pete, Shelly Shelton, like a lot of the the original people. I think Brian Thomas. Um, I almost forgotten that he he passed recently, but um, rest in peace to him. Yeah. And of, the OGs. Yeah. Of course you had um Brandon and Sam Middleton. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I think I reached out to Nikki. Brandon. Yep. Yeah. Mustafa. You talked to Brandon? I reached out to him recently. I, I might be able to connect, get him to do the podcast soon. So fingers crossed. Let's go. Uh, I'll put a bug in your ear or in his <laughs> ear for you because I will see them on Friday. Nice. Nice. I like it. Yes. Cool. Well, just to introduce you to the audience, uh, I always like to ask this question. Who do you say you are? Ooh, I'm an overcomer. I am um, resilient. I am um, not a quitter. (laughs) Um, I'm not sure if that's what the words you're looking for, but um, I am Amanda and I have overcome a lot to get to this point. I like it. I I guess just to uh, let people in a little bit, share with them kind of like the the good news of one thing you overcame recently and then we'll go back to the, the beginning sort of so last week was a, a whole big week for me i achieved seven years of freedom from drugs and alcohol after living a 17 year drug and alcohol addiction and i graduated penn state at 40 years old let's go it's never let's too go. late that's what's up. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, what, what was that feeling like for you? Graduating? Yeah. I'm still processing it because it literally just happened on Saturday. Um, it was like, wow, you actually stay committed to something. You saw it from the beginning to the end. And now you get to reap the rewards. And it was, I'm, I'm so proud of myself. Literally, aside from raising my daughter, going to college is the only thing I've stayed consistent with. And I'm like, you did it. I set a goal to graduate at 40 and I did it. And I'm just so proud. And I I almost teared up too. When we moved the tassel over it, it choked me up. I was like, you go girl. You just did that. That's amazing. And and I guess it's funny because you say seven years and that's almost around the time when like Reeve University would have started when you joined that community. And then I think I joined maybe three years later and just like seeing how much time has passed, but like all the growth, it's like, you're also an author, you wrote Patched Wings and I read read that and I was like, man, this is this is good. I like the the simplicity of it, but the the realness of it, just you sharing your story and giving people takeaways. Like your personality always comes through through a lot of the videos and things like that that you would make or the posts that you would post on Facebook or Instagram or just anywhere on social media. But it it's always good to connect with you and other people that I've met through this community over the time of just doing this podcast, because it's like being able to have those conversations live or um, in this kind of format. And it was cool actually meeting you in person and getting the book from you in, in hand, getting you to sign it. And it was like, wow, this is, it's funny because it's like you think life is a certain way online, but then when you get to meet someone offline, you also see that like there's the reality of life. Everything isn't always just like on the highs, but like when you're not feeling at your best, you can still say like, hey, I'm in town. Like, can you meet up? And 
you shouting out Sam before he he was the one that had reminded me it's like oh yeah Amanda's in the area and I was like let me reach out and see if we can connect and we did just grabbed a coffee and just being able to just like just having that like sit down and you're gonna be okay kid it, it's a it's a real moment I appreciated that yeah for sure I was honored I'm like wait you want to get coffee with me okay let's do it <laughs> Yeah, that was a great time. That that was that seems like so long ago, but I can remember it vividly. I don't even remember when that was. Do you? Um maybe 2017. Wow. Either that's 17 crazy. or 18. Yeah. Yeah. Time time flies. So it's like that's been four, five years probably by now. And a lot, yeah. a lot's happened in in that period of time. Like we've the world's gone through a lot. We've evolved ourselves. And like, like you said, you just graduated from uh, college, Penn State of all places. I think you started remote. And then did you go on the campus or did you stay remote the whole time? You know, I was remote the whole time. Mm. I started I started remote before COVID. And then I, I was able to continue through because I was still remote. So nothing ever changed for me. Mm. And I just kept going. Nice. So yeah, I guess the thing that's funny about graduation or as many people call it is like commencement. It's like a new beginning again. So like you celebrating like seven years of sobriety and now kind of getting something else under your belt and beginning again. Does it, does it feel like that? Like you just, like you mentioned, you've got your daughter's moving out. She's going to college or did she already do college? Yeah, she's, she's in there right now. Mm. Yep. So well, it, I I actually thought about it like this. Penn State has been somewhat like a boyfriend, if you will, because I have not been able to dedicate anything, any of myself to anything else except Penn State and work and being a mom, of course. Um, so honestly, it's like, I just went through a breakup so, like that's the only thing I could equate it to and it, it feels weird I'm like man you've been a part of my life for so long and now we're just parting ways and okay now what you know so right. now I'm just taking before I go to the next thing because I think it's super important that we take time to reflect regroup defog my brain's been so foggy mm -hmm. the, especially the last year of school um so I'm taking some time at least a month before I start a new project because I just want to recenter regroup and make sure I know exactly what the next right move is so I'm it's kind of it's kind of like a grief I'm I'm excited for the next chapter but I'm also grieving a little bit because I'm like shoot like we spent so many nights together you know <laughs> 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 so many weekends yeah uh, but it's great yeah how, how long was the process for you I, I guess i maybe forgot to ask that uh seven uh i'm sorry not seven five years five it started years. in 2017 hmm. so it oh that's right i guess it would have been right around the time that we met you would have been going right into it yeah 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 it's i think a long that, road that's about <laughs> That's about the same amount of time it took me to go through school. And yeah. it was, it's interesting, like you say, when, you, when you're on the other side of it, you, you kind of need like that month or so to process. And for me, it was like I did maybe two weeks break with, uh, with Christmas and then kind of just jumped into it. So that's why it felt so jarring and going from North Georgia to Lake Charles, Louisiana and apologies ahead of time. I, I, I say Louisiana wrong. So just forgive <laughs> it's me. It's all good. <laughs> but um, I just remember it, it always just feels weird going from like one major transition to another. And like, especially like you described it being that fog, it's, it's like you, you really get it take a minute to reflect and be like, okay, what just happened? Like we spent all this time. Okay. Where do I go from here? 
what's the next thing or like what did i like about this this like what are some of the thoughts that are uh going through your mind i, I know you shared a couple of them like what what are some things you're looking to unpack well i want to unpack just the the magnitude of what i did because i literally rose up from the pits of hell and got my chains fell off from addiction it's not that's no easy task i i have plenty of people that i know who um i walked the same path in addiction they're either locked up right now they're dead many of my friends that i hung out with previously are dead or they're locked up or or still actively in addiction and it's one of those things it's the statistically i shouldn't be here i should be in the same boat as them but somehow i got i got out of it and i've been able to pursue some things that i never even thought was possible so that's one of the things now i want to reverse engineer it. okay what how did i do it so that i can teach others how to do it because i, I think that's super important when you overcome adversity or challenges um, it's important to document it, figure it out so that you can reach back and teach others and help others out of that same situation. I like that. I guess, is that part of the reason why you wrote your book in the first place back, back then? Yeah, it is because I tried so many times to get sober and I made it I think one time I made it up to like five or six months and then it's like that first year is the hardest because you're, you're letting go of the substances that have been a part of your life for so long and you're trying to reintroduce new habits and you're hoping that they're going to stick. You got to try to be consistent. You got to, I, I personally had to change everything about what I was doing that's one of the reasons I wrote the book and I love that you mentioned that you you loved it being simple simplistic because that is exactly what I was going for there's no need to overcomplicate it like it's a b c one two three if you can do these things if you can implement things consistently you can change so yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I, I specifically that book is targeted towards people trying to achieve that first year of sobriety. Hmm. I like that. And I've heard it said before, I'm, I'm no expert on this, so I'm just kind of repeating what I've heard many times, but I guess they always, I've heard it said that with sobriety, the big element that usually plays a role into it is like having a faith experience like would you say that played a role in it for you absolutely for sure me and god are homies um I, it doesn't matter if you believe in god the universe uh, whatever religion i took a world religion class at penn state and it really opened my eyes up like while I want people to believe in my God, like I'm not about to push him on you as long as you believe in something bigger than yourself. I think it requires that because we're only humans, you know, we can only do so much. So we have to believe in something greater than us to help us get on the other side. How did that help you kind of get on the other side? I guess, could you, if you had to like try and put it into words, so to speak? Well, God speaks to me through nature. Hmm. So I remember vividly whenever I finally decided that um, I had to. So I'm from Mississippi, but I live in Florida. And when I decided, okay, enough is enough. I packed my bag and I moved down to Florida. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a place to live. I had nothing except my car and the few things I had in my car. And I think I had like $200. And that's it. And as I was driving down the floor, this is really the first experience with God. Like, now I've known God my whole life. I grew up in church, but it was like the realest experience that I can recall because I'm like, okay, God, 
I feel like you're you're wanting me to move. So, but I have nothing lined up. So, if if this is what I'm supposed to do, I'm gonna need you to give me a sign. And then, a few minutes later, I saw the the clouds form into a, a turtle. And a turtle. And so this is where I started looking up the meaning of animals and what is the spiritual meaning and what is God trying to tell me through the animals. Uh, I know it might sound a little woo woo to some people, but it's what I believe in. It's what keeps me going. And so the turtles um, signify shelter, a home. Uh, and so that's just when it became real for me. And then I just kept leaning into that. And um, anytime and still to this day, anytime I'm going through something hard, got to throw up a rainbow in the sky. It's just the little things like that. Um, it's like a, um, a inner knowing. So my heart also does this little flutter thing. Like mm. if I'm on the right path, then it, it does this little flutter thing to let me know I'm on the right path. Mostly, I think it's, um, letting go of some distractions and not being afraid to sit still so that you can figure out how god or the universe or whatever you believe in speaks to you i hope that makes sense it does i was gonna say is that why you're a fan of the the butterflies like the one in behind you yeah yeah up there yep and i got butterflies on my arm actually crazy you mentioned the butterflies because as i was graduating uh i i was asked to speak at our graduation cer ceremony and right as i was walking up a white butterfly flew in the background and that is definitely a sign that i'm on the right path and it was just like one of those wow thank you god for that yeah i i love the critters i love nature i, I believe that that has been a huge part of my sobriety as well. Getting out in nature, uh, there's so many lessons to learn out there. It can teach it, it, it can teach you a lot, and it can also make you feel peace and love and joy. And so much I could go on and on about the nature. In fact, I'm going on a camping trip. I nice. graduation present to myself <laughs> to Yellowstone, and I'm so excited. Oh man, great choice! Yeah, I'm so excited. That's awesome. I guess like how you have you already mapped out the trip and all that, like you've got how long you're going to be there, what you're going to visit, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm actually for because I have no gear. I used to have a lot of camping gear, but I lost it in all the transitions of my life. So I'm actually going to go with um, a company that that provides the camping experience. So they're they've got it all mapped out. And then from there. Mm -hmm. I might get my own stuff and go out. You, you can't never tell about me. <laughs> you want to go camping? Maybe. I, I guess <laughs> I, I haven't been in a while. I, I think maybe I've been glamping the past couple of years. Like we've got this, this um, fall retreat for, from the men's prayer line. And every November, I think they did it one time over the summer, but just about like the first week of every November, We'll go up to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and we'll uh, be up there in the Smoky Mountains and just fellowship, be able to meet some of the guys that you talk with over the phone that are from like all parts of the world, all parts of the country. And you kind of just go up there, rent out this giant log cabin that sleeps maybe like 50 people. And you hang out, maybe you go down to the strip and like walk around experience some of the the um the restaurants or the rides or the like go-karts and different different activities like that but just being a being being in the presence of men is is pretty neat but that's the closest i've gotten to camping recently before maybe I think maybe 2018 I, I might have been more active that year I, I might have gone camping with a group of friends and like we did like the mountain biking and the um sleeping in a tent with a cot under there and it's like you figure out pretty quickly why you need you need a cot under your sleeping bag and you don't want to just rough it because it's gonna be rough I think at some point like 
I kept tossing and turning and I just went out and I found a giant rock at like three in the morning when the sky was like pitch black and I could see the stars clearly. So I was just like, I'm just going to lay back on this rock and just take all this in. So it, it was, it was pretty enjoyable. So that that's been my latest experience camping, but Hey, if we can make it work out, I'll, I'll go with you. <laughs> I bet. Man. So I guess maybe we'll keep going backwards a little bit. So I guess being, being from Mississippi and, and still going back and forth, like, what has it been like for you? Um, like, as you go back and you no longer spend time where you used to, or like, what do you do now when, when you go back versus like back then when you were going through it? Well, now I just kind of hang out with my family, kind of lay low. For the first um, few years that I went back, it brought me a lot of anxiety because I had, I was kind of famous in a small town and not in a good way, okay? Um, everybody knew my name because I've been arrested many times, lots of trouble with the law, so I always felt anxious and like my palms were sweaty like they're gonna mess with me I didn't want to go nowhere because I didn't want to have any run even though I'm clean and sober you still like I'm like is there any lingering charges I have no idea you know what I'm saying <laughs> so yeah. it was very scary um but one year I went back and I was like you know what enough of this I'm not gonna keep if I'm gonna come back I've got to go to some of these spots where I used to buy drugs, do drugs, hang out, whatever, and declare my freedom. Now, obviously, I couldn't uh, go every single place that I've done drugs. That would be impossible because I couldn't remember uh, if you paid me a million dollars. There's no way I could remember every piece of dirt. But I did go to a couple of places that I remembered specific events happened at. And I just stood on the ground and declared my freedom and my peace. And um, ever since then, I haven't had anxiety going back. I only go back like once a year. Um, so I, I just go visit my family, level my family, and then come back. You know, just kind of stay in my little bubble. Don't venture out too much. And also, not that I'm not that I'm not strong enough, but I just have no desire to go hang out with the same people doing the same things again. I I, I do want to help them out, but when you're you can't help somebody that doesn't want to help themselves. So if they're not ready for help, all they're gonna do is just drag you back down. I don't want to take that chance. I didn't come too far now. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. There's no, there's no you're not listening to that little voice that's just like ah oh, come on come on it's like just no, one time no. it's not worth it it's one time mm -hmm. too many that's right if i the other day what i say the other day sometimes when i say that um like i, I heard from so-and-so the other day and the look has it's been like two years i'm like oh shoot time flies but so by so fast um i'm sorry if i stumble over my words because I'm still slightly foggy from school, okay? So I'm, like, in the process of defogging the very first stages. But I passed somebody. I was going through. It was a rough time at school. Passed somebody that was smoking weed. I smelled it. I was like, man, it would be so nice, and I'd be so relaxed if I could just take one hit. But if I took one hit of weed, I'm going to become a meth head. I'm going to end up in prison or dead, and that's the end of that. So I can't even take a chance on hanging out with people uh, that are continuing to do that. Gotcha. It's funny. I, I spoke with um with a guest by the name of RJ. And whenever I asked him the question, who do you say you are? He's, he kind of gave the rundown, like father, um, husband. And he was like, and I'm an alcoholic. And I was like, wait, what? What what's going on? And he kind of broke down like he's been sober for so long, but then like the the title of that like sobriety is a thing that he he focuses on, but like kind of keeping that 
that thing within the forefront of his mind is kind of a, a constant reminder of um, what it is that he can't go back to because he knows that what one will turn into like a blackout drunk, which is like a state that he doesn't want to be in. So it's like having those kind of guardrails, so to speak, to be like, okay, I know I have to not put myself in the same environment as the substance. And like, even if I have a notion in my mind, I need to play the tape out, so to speak, to be like, I know what's at the end of it. Let me not try to fool myself and indulge and then kind of be like, oh, woes me. Because that, at the end of the day, that's that's not really going to put me in a best position of where I wanted to be. It's like, I've, I've already come this far. Why would I, why risk it? Exactly. I personally don't like those titles on me, but, but to his point, even I'm, I'm using school a lot because I literally it's just so fresh. But like, yeah, for it's example, been, it's just been two or three days. Right. It's it's, it's forgivable. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if there was an assignment, I would literally go to the point. I'm like, man, I don't feel like doing this today. I don't want to write this paper. It's stupid. I hate this topic. But then I'm like, okay, you don't write this paper, you're going to become a meth head again. And then I just start replaying all the, some of the things I've been through, like God to give me these vivid, uh, it's like a, a, a video reel of things that I've been through just popping off in my head. I'm like, wow, over this one assignment, I, I can correlate it like this one paper. If you don't do this one paper, you're going to become a meth head again. Because that's going to, um, that prevents me from being consistent and consistency. If I'm not consistent with the things I need to do every day, I'm just going to go backwards. So yeah, I, I totally agree. I like that you, you point out the, like the importance to draw that hard line in the sand, so to speak, and really touch on one consistency, but also it's like in doing what you feel you need to do on it on a daily basis it's like a constant reminder of what you don't want to return to and putting like that high amount of pressure of like this needs to get done for over a period of five years of course life is happening ow you're raising a daughter oh sorry i think something just bit me you good yeah i couldn't tell if an ant just bit my toe or what's going on Hopefully I'm bite right. it back. No. <laughs> <laughs> I might tear up my desk. But um yeah, when when you when you talk about just that amount of focus and also not just the focus, but how you have to really will yourself into doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. Um, it makes sense. Like you say, you really need to take this month to really like decompress and like allow yourself whether it's like through journaling or just asking those questions of being like how did i overcome this or how can i reverse engineer this to make it applicable to somebody else because it's like that that's probably one of the greatest feelings in the world when you um when you're not only able to accomplish something but when you're able to teach it to someone and if they can get it, it really gives you that full satisfaction of like, man, I really did learn that because somebody else was able to take what I did and make it work for themselves. Yeah, man. That's powerful. Yeah, And that's the goal for me. And I mentioned like going back to help pull others out of the trenches. But then I also said, I didn't want to hang out with people in that environment. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to clarify what, like, there are people in the trenches that have their hands up, like, help me, help me. I don't even know where to go. Just help me. But then there's other people that are still in the environment that all they want to do is drag you down. So I want to really focus on those people that are like, I don't know where to go. Just help me. Um, so, yeah. When you can teach people, and your method is proven to work because it worked for you. And then you can teach when you teach somebody else, you're like, wow, this might be actually something 
amazing, you know, where if it can help 10 people, that's amazing. That's 10 more people that can have their life, that can thrive in life, that can um, operate in their purpose. And that's, I think that's what we're here to do. Yeah. Uh, I, and to, to your point specifically, like becoming a part of something like Breve University or having met someone like an Eric Thomas and kind of seeing like what his mission is and vision is. And and I've heard it said in, in different ways by a good friend. And he said, I guess sometimes when you, you see someone that's very influential, you may fall in love with the, with the person, or you might make the person out to be like an idol, almost so to speak. And it's like from a um, spiritual perspective, that's something problematic you you want to believe in something that's greater than yourself but you never want to make that something materialistic or someone that's like you can see because people at any point in time can do something to not make you keep you you people can very quickly come off of a platform, so to speak, but it's also not fair to another human to put them on that platform to be like, Oh, you're blameless. You're this, you're that. But it's like, sometimes you'll fall in love with someone's mission. Other times you may fall in love with the person themselves, like the, um, the fame, maybe that it comes from knowing them, but then also you at the end of the day could derive from that your own journey to be like, okay, like this is something that this person lived. Here's some proven principles that I can pull and I can apply to my life myself. Like you can either maintain a good relationship, not have a good relationship or not have a relationship at all. But like the important thing is like, if you get the lesson that was taught and you're able to apply that to yourself I, I think that's that's kind of like the evolution of what the last five years give or take has been like for me kind of like learning about who Dr. Eric Thomas is and like learning about Brief University learning about the men's prayer line meeting other impactful people and then getting a closer look really in the mirror like whether it's like okay you want to be like a lot of people may be entrepreneur like but like, and they might not like their nine to five, but like me having gone like into school and getting a job out of school and essentially having established a career going with one company and then going with another and then trying just like having the different experiences I was able to have. I'm learning over time. It's like, oh, okay, this is the kind of the process of life and you can either do it hard you can do it easy but it's still gonna be hard even though it's easy it's like or it might be simple but it's not necessarily easy it's like you still gotta get up and do things when you don't want to do it but it's like what you learn along the way is the important thing and like whether you're working somewhere for 40 years or if you work somewhere every six months and whatever kind of fits your personality is, is what I've just learned is like, it's very cool kind of just seeing the process, meeting you at the start, a start of a process and kind of being here on, on the other side, like a few years down the line and being like, huh, we're, we're each evolving on our path. And, and that's pretty neat to see. Yeah, absolutely. And then to your point, I, I also agree that us humans idolize celebrities, if you will, uh, such as Eric Thomas, since that's where we met. Um, but I've I've never been the type of person like he has this whole amazing program, um, applicable steps you can put to your life and get changes but I've never been the type to follow anybody's advice 100% I'm always going to take the little nuggets oh I see the principles there and then I have to um I was going to say manipulate it but that's not the right word uh, you make I just it have to work for you yeah exactly um and put the thing that's funny about that it's like even through creating the programs what I noticed over 
the years that I, I would listen back to podcasts or TGIM, thank God it's Mondays, or like the success series that they would do with the college students in Michigan, you would always challenge people to say, hey, here's something you can do, but you have to make this work for you. And like asking the question, what's your why? What motivates you? What drives you? It's like seeing it in like the disc assessment or the advanced insights that a lot of people are doing now. It's like, you can study material or you can get a lot of information, but until you can like personalize it for yourself and really understand the gravity of the information, like if it's not something you can use, it it's might as well be worthless or not worth your time because it's like, it's good to know, okay, you read an article, you read a book. It's like the information might not click until like five, 15 years, 25 years later and be like, uh, that makes so much sense now. Yeah, no doubt. I, I'm there. I'm about um, effective and efficient. And so if it serves no purpose in my life, because I haven't had the space for unnecessary, like it's taken us, I'm not saying this is unnecessary. I'm so grateful, but using this podcast as an example, we've tried to do this for a couple months and I just haven't had the space. So overall, I'm like, all right, is this going to add value to my life? Anything that I do is about anybody who has been through addiction maybe can relate to this because anything that I put into my life is about to become an obsession. Like I'm about to get obsessed with the thing. So I have to really evaluate it. Like, all right, is this going to be good for me? And if so, am I willing for myself to go all in on this one thing? Um, so, I, so from the jump, I have to um, kind of evaluate new things. Let me make sure I um, arrange it just right where it's going to fit into my life. Uh, for example, I I had to rebuild my credit for this whole, I don't know, I've been working on it for like four years or something, but I got so obsessed with it. Like, it's probably not a healthy obsession, but nonetheless, I can't help that about myself. It is what it is. Um, but yeah. some, I, because of my obsession, and I was okay with with bringing that into my life. I got my credit score from like a five hundred to now it's an eight twenty, um, and it's take, it took me like four years to get there. But when you get involved in whether it's my program that's going to be coming out eventually or ets or yours or whoever's it is like make sure that it that it's um going to be productive for your life and you're just not joining the bandwagon just because they said it's good make sure it's good for you yeah i love that it's funny because as you're talking about credit i, I looked at mine recently and i was like man it took so long just to get it to this point and then within a matter of months it's just like psh, it's like man but you know what it's you wake up the next day and it's, it's something that can be fixed so it's not the end of the world is get educated do a little bit of research and then see where we go from here I can help you now my my I'm not a credit expert mm -hmm. but I can share what I did and it's not the fast way it is absolutely the turtle path but I got you if you if you want some help I got you appreciate it uh, yeah I, like you said I I think I have an, I, a few ideas but I, I'll definitely keep you in mind I, I think it it's it's correctable because I, I had to kind of slow down and take a look at what was really going on and just be like, okay, yeah, okay, I, I see what's going on. It's like a few things may have just like slipped through the cracks, but it's like, that's eh, it's doable. We'll, we'll get we'll get it. we'll get it back. You got it. You yeah. got it. <laughs> you figure out the problem. There's always a solution. Yeah. There's always a solution. Always. And um. I guess now that, well, I guess you'll, you'll kind of figure this out as you unpack and everything like that, but are you looking to build your online presence back up or is there like, could people reach out to you and connect with you? Yeah, I, I did have to take uh, a step back 
because you got to figure out what's priority in each season. Um, so I do feel like, so one of my dreams is to tie the two worlds of addiction recovery and banking mortgage together. Hold on one second. My dog started eating right now while we're doing this. One second. Gotcha. Okay. Real life. Yeah. Okay. So one of my dreams is to tie the two worlds of addiction recovery and banking mortgage. Everything I've learned um, throughout my journey of sobriety, because I see that um, I briefly worked at a recovery treatment center and I saw gaps um, in the, in the, it, just the whole uh, recovery environment there's there's gaps and i believe that if you're if you see the gap it's your responsibility to fill the gap um so i want to teach people how how to thrive how to manage money how to eventually go on to buy a house um so i am going to be building up my online presence again um it kind of i had to you know, like I said previously, you have to just figure out what's best for each season of your life. And, and that was best. It was hard for me to take a step back, um, but I did it uh, and I accomplished the goal because of it. And now I'm going to come back stronger and better and see how many people we can help. Yeah. And I guess to your point, you're, I almost forgot you're a homeowner too, right? No, actually, no. I'm not in this season. No, I, I'm renting, um, but I do work at the mortgage company in the mortgage industry. So that's awesome because I, I guess the thing, the, the thing to highlight, not to um, put you on the spot, so to speak, but even as I'm looking at myself now, it's like talking about being able to take a step back and really look at what's best for you. It's like, there's the, I always like that you talk about the highs and the lows because it, it, it really brings life into perspective because it's like, it's easy to celebrate the wins on social media and just be like, Hey, look at what I got. But then it's like, when it doesn't go there, it's like to say, okay, no, it's not there, but this is what works best for me. For, for me, for now, it might be, um, downsizing from where I'm at also renting. And it's like, I, I had this semi obsession with wanting to own a house so much. Like I, I was getting ready to sign going into closing on a house at like the start of 2019. And then I was like backed out at the last minute and then ended up leaving the job within like the next six months and going back home. And then again, like figuring things out at the end of 2019 started the podcast and then kind of getting that energy up again and trying to do too many things at once. And then here comes 2020 January. I'm like excited. I'm, <laughs> I want to get down, get this property, get something around Atlanta, be able to like be mobile or like had all these grand ideas in my mind. And then um, again, like being able to consult with a, a good realtor that like really sat me down and be like, these are the things that you need. You do not have these things in place, so we cannot do this. And it's like, I was like, okay. But then fast forward two, three months and working overseas in Puerto Rico or just off the mainland in Puerto Rico since it's a territory and then pandemic strikes. And then we're back home again for a couple months, maybe three more months. And it's like, whew, good thing I didn't buy that house. <laughs> So it's like, now as I'm looking at it, I'm renting this place because it's the only place I could find um, coming here where I'm at now. But the thing that's cool is that like, okay, you see your income and expenses, if they're not quite matching, like something's got to give. And it's like, okay, instead of trying to appear for myself as a person of like stature, it's like, no, let me actually do what's practical, what I need. And then if it's helps me build up from there, better I do that than just try to like front or just be like, oh, hey, I told Amanda I've got this place. Look at what I've got. And it's like, maybe now the world knows they care. And it's like, the world's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. And it's like, 
it's not really going to do anything for me to pretend or just to put on airs, so to speak, but to really be honest and be like, okay, this is what works for the season. Exactly. Do Ain't no way I could be mowing some grass or making sure all the stuff of home ownership was through school and working full time. Like I didn't have the space to even think about one more thing. And so renting was just what works for me. And that's okay. It, it doesn't even matter. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves. I, I'm, I'm guilty of that as well, because I'm like, man, you spent all this time in addiction and you should be here and you, and you could have had this. I'm like, no, stop. Like, you, you are in an amazing spot where exactly where you need to be and who cares if you rent an apartment who cares doesn't matter yeah. um i wasn't ready for home ownership and yeah. <laughs> will i be ready in another year i don't know i have no idea because now i want to start traveling and doing stuff and i don't know mm-hmm. i know i don't want to have to deal with no hot water heater going out or anything <laughs> like that you know what i'm saying like right it's funny that this, like having this place or being able to rent this place has been a, a great, um, it's actually been great for me as like a trial run to home ownership because I'm responsible for like the maintenance. But like if something major is up, like if the sink or something's out, like I can still put in a work order for that. But like keep, keeping like the bushes trimmed or like the grass cut, that's on me. But it's like, reaching out to somebody and being like, oh, there's a lawn care service and they can do it. Or another weekend I can go out and do it and just enjoy like the, the ease of it, or I guess maybe like the therapy of it, just to be able to like get from one end of the yard to the other end, just be like, man, that that feels nice. Like sit out there, smell the smell of fresh cut grass, but like trimming down one of the bushes that I haven't cut down in over eight, maybe nine months since I've been here, I looked up and I was like, I looked at the pictures from when I first moved in and I looked up and I was like, yeah, I kind of let it go out of control. But then (laughs) on the one side, I was doing it by hand and I cut one way down and I was like, (laughs) it'll it'll grow back. But I kind of rounded it somewhat. And then on the other side, I was like, yeah, don't just don't cut it that much. And I borrowed a friend's trimmer and just going to like tinker with it. So like, just all these opportunities to like use tools, think about like, okay, if you're going to live in a house, here's the, the rooms you need to fill. Here's things you have to consider as, like you said, being in an apartment, maybe have a little less space, but just less things to think about. Like so many things you got to maintain and like, I got to go spray for ants and (laughs) just maintain (laughs) that. It's like, okay, there's this ant pile here, this ant pile here, go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot. And it's like, okay, use this treatment, use that treatment, use that treatment. It's like, it's a process. Every blessing comes with a burden. Mm. There's always something to take care of when you get a big blessing. And, and I just think that's just the way it is, you know? That if, at least from my experience and and honestly I haven't wanted I haven't wanted the burdens of no home ownership yet so I'm good I'm good man I'm right where I'm supposed to be you know yeah and and I'm okay with that Same. it took me a long time to get here yeah it took me a long a lot of work um mental work um and and I still got a long way to go and that's okay too Cause I plan to live till I'm hundred and see what we can do. <laughs> it's funny. I was listening to somebody talk about, um, they were talking about like extending the age of people where they're, they're doing this. I'm going to mispronounce it, but basically they're freezing your body in stages to where it's like, you've got to be gone enough to where like your organs may start to fail but not too gone to where you're like six feet in the ground or incinerated it's like well at that point we can't really help you but like before (laughs) then we can kind of um like chill you over time and or we can chill you over 
a period of a day or something like that, but then we'll keep you on ice basically for who knows, like 70 years or so until the technology gets to where like if we preserve your brain and everything like that, we can basically build you a new body and then just put you in there and you just go kicking. They'll have like a whole thing where they <laughs> they um, basically tell you like, oh, here's what you missed over the last 50 years or however long you've been out of commission like Captain America. But it's like, the world's wow. the world's developing, so it's a good thing that you're thinking about a hundred, and you've got plenty to look forward to. Yeah, man, I'm like you. You can get into the comparison mode real quick, like especially with social media. That's it's one of those things. And I'm 40 years old now. You know, I just graduated college this weekend you know, I'm like, I should be a millionaire by now. I should have all these things in place. And I finally just had to say, go look in the mirror. And I'm like, you are amazing. You have overcome so much. You have so much you're going to do. I have to talk to myself all the time because you're, I am a, my own coach. I, no one believes in me more than I believe in myself. Um, so yeah, if you don't ever feel like you're not where you're supposed to be because you are, can we all improve? Yes. We all have room for improvement. Absolutely. Um, I think you should strive for growth every single day, but just give yourself some grace. Yeah. I love that. And I, as a, favorite thing Gary V always says is like, you just got time. You're how old? Oh, you got time. It's like, you're so young. Like just, you just got so much time. It's like, you're just getting started. You're like, what, maybe half time. It's like, nah, just, just do you do what works for you and just continue to just build and build on that. Heck yeah. We spring chickens. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but one one last question I've got for you from the first question I asked you at the start of the podcast. Are you still who you said you were? I think so. Yeah, I'm an overcomer. I think I'll be an overcomer for the rest of my life until I'm 102. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love it. I don't... Uh, I can't remember where I heard it from. I don't like to put, I'm a mom, I'm a this, I'm a that. Like, what is, what are you at your core? That's what I try to think of. At my core, I'm an overcomer. I, I have, and always will, like I just said, I will be fighting addiction for the rest of my whole life. Not, not um, consciously, but as I stated earlier, as long as I'm consistent with my mind, my body, my soul, feeding that every single day, then that is my fight of addiction. And so therefore I will always be an overcomer. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for being on the podcast, Amanda. Man, I'm so honored. Let's don't wait so long to connect <laughs> again. Okay. I had to go for off sure. the grid for a little bit, but now I'm back. So we're not going to go 1,200 years without connecting. No, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep in touch. If it's not through social media, it'll be through text, but or smoke signals out, worst case scenario. Yes, I'm going to send a message with the pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate Thank you. Thank you so much. It was my honor. You're very welcome.